Hi everyone, Greg here. So what are sandwich numbers? Well, consider the following number. You see a one, then it's followed by one digit, and then there's another one. You see a two, then there are two digits, and then another two. There's a three, three digits, and then another three. So here's another example for n equals four. And here is an example for n equals seven. So I heard about those numbers many years ago, and I found that they were interesting. I just found out during the research for this video that they're actually called sandwich numbers. I was nearly going to call them onion numbers. So why didn't I show you an example of n equals 5 or n equals 6? Well, that's because no such example does exist. So it should be quite obvious that it doesn't work for n equals 1 and n equals 2. For n equals 3, two solutions exist. And know that one is actually the reverse of the other. And of course, that is something that you always will be able to do for any solution. You just will be able to take the reverse of that and get another solution. So for n equals 4, also two solutions exist. None for 5 and 6. For 7, there are 52 solutions. And for n equals 8, there are 300 solutions. There's none for 9 and 10. There are 35,584 solutions for n equals 11. And 216,288 for n equals 12. There are 0 for 13 and 14. And for n equals 15, well, that was beyond the ability of my old little laptop to be able to calculate. But let's just say that there's a lot of them. So in a second, I'll show you the code which allowed me to calculate all those numbers. And um, as always, there will be links in the description to the GitLab so that you can have a look at the code for yourself and maybe compile it and run it if you want. But why are there no solutions for 5, 6, and then 9, 10, and 13, 14, and so on? Well, there's actually a very simple little proof that demonstrates that that's the case. So as an example, let us take a solution for 7. Uh, any solution will always contain an even number of digits, as each digit is appearing exactly twice. Now let's give those digits alternating colors, red and green. Since we have an even number of digits, we have an equal number of red and green, and that will always be true for any solution. The odd numbers are either both red or both green, and the even numbers will always be one red and one green. I think it's quite clear as to why this is true. That's obviously to do with the gap that's in between those numbers. This whole system only works with an even number of distinct odd numbers. So in this example, we have ones and threes and fives and sevens. That is four pairs, four pairs of odd numbers. Four is even, so this works. What if we had an odd number of distinct odd numbers? So let's say we had ones and threes and fives, sevens and nines. Well, then we could have two pairs of red and three pairs of green, let's say. That would be an unequal amount of red and green pairs. Now, the even numbers will always contribute an equal amount of red and green numbers. And the total always gives us an equal amount of red and green numbers. So when we have five pairs, that doesn't add up. Now, the only way this works is if we have an even number of odd numbers. Now, another way of saying that is that n needs to be of the form 4m, where m is a natural number, or it needs to be of the form 4m minus 1. So that's a neat little proof telling us why we don't have solutions for 5, 6, and so on. So now, how did I find all the solutions for a given n? So let's say n equals 3. Well, you could take an array of 6 elements, and then fill it in with every combination of 1, 2s and 3s. And then see which one does work. This solution would work, but it would be very inefficient. Uh, there's a better and faster way of doing this. For any pair of digits, it's only really the first one of the pair for which you have a real choice of placement. For any digit x, the second of the pair will need to be placed x plus 1 positions to the right of that. So a faster method is to write all the combinations of 1, 2s and 3s and then expand them out. So let's say for the first combination we have 1, 2, 3. You zero the array, you place 1 in the first element and then another 1 in the third element. 
you place two in the first available space, in the first available element, and then you place the second one in the fifth element. And you just do this for all the digits. So for free, you would need to go outside the bounds of the array, so you can stop right there and rule that one out. Even when you can place all the digits within bounds, that doesn't automatically guarantee that you have a solution. You need to scan the array for zeros. If there aren't any zeros, you have a solution. So now you need to come up with a way of generating all the combinations of 1, 2s, 3s, and so on, all the way up to n. How do you do that? Well, I came up with two different approaches. So here I have a systematic listing of all the combinations, 1, 2, 3, 4. What you may notice is that the first combination is 1, 2, 3, 4 in the right order. And the last is 1, 2, 3, 4 in reverse order. So how many combinations would you have with 1, 2 and 3? Well, with just 1, 2 and 3, the answer would be 6. Like it's n factorial, 3 factorial, so that would be 6. Here I have 6 combinations that begin with 1. And then 6 combinations that begin with 2. 6 combinations with 3 and then 4. So obviously after the 1 comes every combination of 2, 3, 4. And every combination of 2, 3, 4 is again 6. Right? So if you look at one of those 6 combinations, you notice that after the 2, they are again in order 1, 3, 4. For the first combination. And... For the last one, they are again in reverse order, 1, 3, 4 in reverse order. And this is true for every set of 6 combinations. You have 1, 2, 4 here and 4 to 1. And that same pattern repeats at every level. So after the 3 and the 1, I have 2 and 4 in the right order and 4 and 2 in reverse order. Alright, so here's a code. Let me first show you what it does before I give any commentary. So, so what it's doing here, it's computing all the solutions for n equals 7. And we have 52 solutions. And those are all the 52 solutions. Now when you look at the code, I have n equals 7. What if I do, what if I do n equals 4? And recompile. You see, these are all the solutions for n equal 4. I'm going to make one quick change to the code. And rather than expanding, I'm just going to print all the combinations of 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's all the combinations, even those that aren't actually valid solutions. So there you are, and it says zero solutions because now since it's no longer expanding, it's not... It's no longer finding any actual solutions. But you see 1, 2, 3, 4. And 4, 3, 2, 1. So it's basically systematically listing all the combinations of 1, 2, 3, and 4. So how did I do that? We have the main here. List combinations. And what you see here in list combinations is that I'm using two arrays, one is called used, the other is result. And then I have this recursive function, LC. I pass on those two arrays, I pass on N, and then I pass on a number. And then every time we recursively call the function, that number is going to be incremented. So here I have this variable level. And what I do is I find the first element in used so basically that array used will be empty at first so it is just going to return one because that first element is empty so it will find the first empty element within the array that will be k and then in result the first element will be set to one because as we start listing all the combinations we begin the first element we want the number one to be there so this is 1. If we subtract 1, then we get the index of the array, since they are numbered from 0. And so in the first element with index 0, we put the level. Now the level is the number of times we have called LC. 
So if you remember, we passed on i, which is zero. We did i plus one, so that level is one to begin with. And so in used in the first element, we put one. Then we recursively call that function. So what will happen when you do that? Level will be two. Find first. Now that is going to be two. Right. And then here in the second position, it will put two. In use in the second element, it will put two. And so then as it called the function, and then it calls it again, we'll fill in three and four. Right? Then we get to a point where level is the same as size. So this is basically the same thing as n. So when level is equal to 4 then it's just gonna print it so it's going through this while loop how many times does it go through the while loop the first time that we call the function it needs to go through it four times right so basically we have all those ones here it, it begins with a one and then it begins with a two so that's a second time a third time, a fourth time. So the first time we call the function, it's going to be 4 minus 0. So it's going to go through it four times. Then we recursively call it. It will go through the loop three times, then two times, then one time. Now, let's say it goes through it two times. What happens then? Well, okay, so we decrement go. K here equals find next, so it will find that 3, because it'd be at level 3 at that point, is in the third element of used, and then it's going to return 4, and then in that third position, it's going to put the number 4, it's going to decrement, in that last element of the array used, it will then put the number 3. So at that point, when it calls that again, in the last element of result, it will put the number 3. And so that will be the second combination that it's going to find. So then as it goes down to the levels again, and it gets down to level 2, it will come to here. This will return 3 this time. Here in the second position of result, it will now put number 3. And here in array used, it's actually going to put the level the level 2 in the third position and then it's going to recursively go through those functions again the deeper levels to deal with all the combinations that begin with one free all right and as it goes and find all the combinations this way you can either print them and get all the combinations or you can do expand and what happens inside expand it will test whether that solution actually work and if it does it will print it out and if it doesn't it's not going to print it out and then it's just going to continue and try and find the next combination. All right, so that's a bit complex, but hopefully it makes sense. And it's a fairly complicated problem, but nonetheless, this code achieves that in relatively few lines, right? We only have about 160 lines and it's doing all of those things of going through all the combinations, expand them out, see if the solution works and then print them out when they do. All right, so I said that I had come up with two approaches to list all the combinations. The one I've just discussed is an efficient and a fast way, but it's not the most convenient way. So maybe what you would prefer and would be more convenient is you just fill in an array with the first combination and then you have a function get next. You pass on that array, you pass on the size of the array, and what it will do is it will rearrange those numbers within the array to give you the next combination. So that is what happens here in get next. It will simply give you the next combination. And then you just print out the array. Get next will return zero as long as there is a next combination. And once there isn't, then it will return negative one. So then the while loop just stops and you know you've gone through all the combinations. So the only thing that that requires you to do is to fill in the first one yourself. And the first one is easy. It's just all the numbers in the right order. 
Okay, so I'm not going to discuss this code in detail. It is going to be on the GitLab. You can study it for yourself if you want to. But it basically does the same thing. It does list all the combinations. Let me just demonstrate that this really works. So, so let me compile it. And there you have it. All the combinations for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Alright, so that's it. So let me know what do you think about sandwich numbers. Do you find them interesting or not? Were you able to compute if you have better and faster hardware? Were you able to compute all the possible solutions for n equals 15 or beyond? And if you have, let me know and put it in the comments below. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you in the next one. And as always, thank you for watching.